Alright, have your attention please. Uh, before we begin, I'm going to have, uh, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to have Warren come up to give his testimony, and then we'll have time for music, and then we are to So without further uh, talk, because I can really talk because I'm Irish, um, here's Warren. seems to like to attack the pastors the most. And I've had two pastors in my life. I got saved in 1971. And since 71 to now, well, Pastor Don's is good. I've had two pastors in my life. And they've been the best and the most honorable men I have ever met in my life. And I just think that uh, the wives should be so proud of their husbands for what they do. And I know that the wives, take a lot of a lot of aggravation also. Because I've seen what goes on. I I've, I've sat up with my best friend, which was Pastor Tom Hyman, who, who uh, passed at the First Baptist Church in uh, Webster. And I sat up with him night after night with people just come down on him and just be nasty and uh, being a former Marine, I had a hard job just not doing anything, but the Lord kept me under control. So uh, I know you guys should be very proud of what you do, and people should be very grateful for what you do, because you have the most important job in the world. And so I wanted to give you my testimony of how I got saved. But in Romans chapter 10, and it starts in verse 14. And it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of the preacher, the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who hath believed our report. So and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And gentlemen, you bring the word of God to people. And if it wasn't for a preacher in Sandusky, Ohio, I wouldn't be here today. Because just to give you a little background, I was a Marine. I was in Vietnam during the Tet Offensive. I got home in uh, 1970, just got out of the service in 71. So from there I decided, I'm, I'm actually from Provincetown, and I'm a Portuguese, but anyway. So I just uh, decided I wanted to go to Sandusky because I was not saved, and it was a girl. So I went to Sandusky. And I couldn't get a job on the police department because I was too short, and that's what I wanted to do. So I got a job at security. And I got this little place I rented in a place called Monroeville, which is roughly 45 minutes from Sandusky. And I worked in security in a place in Sandusky. And Sandusky has a big amusement park called Cedar Point. Everybody's just like heard of that. And I used to go by this church all the time. And it was First Baptist Church of Sandusky. And I never thought anything about it. And so one day, I'm home on a Thursday night, which I'll never forget. And I'm just sitting there watching some TV, and I get a knock on the door. This guy's standing out there with a suit and tie, and I'm in the country. And I'm saying, who is this guy? What's he doing? So you know, I open the door, and he says, how are you doing? I said, well, I've done better, but, you know, what's going on? He said, well, he said, my name is uh, Pastor Russell Dennis. I said, yeah. 
He says, and, uh, I bet you go by my church a lot. I said, what's that? And he told me, he said, that's the Baptist Temple. Well, that's 45 minutes from where I live. And this man is out on a Thursday night by himself, and he comes knocking on my door. And I said, this is, this is nuts. And he says, well, I want to ask you a question. I said, well, well, what's that? He says, if you died today, where would you go? Well, being Portuguese, I was Catholic. So I said, well, purgatory. And he kind of smiled, and he said, I, uh, how about if I talk to you a little bit? I said, OK. So he came in, and we sat down, and we talked. And he gave me the whole plan of salvation. And he explained everything to me. And at the end, he gave me an invitation. He said, would you like to do this? This is Thursday night. I said, uh, nah, I don't think so. I'm good. He said, OK. He said, you know where my church is? Well, Sunday morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, I was at his church. The doors weren't even open yet. And I'm sitting in my car, and he comes driving up. And he says to me, Hey, it's nice to see you. He said, but you're a little bit early. I said, well, yeah, just a little. I said, but you know that thing you were talking about? He said, salvation? I said, yeah, well, I need that. He says, okay. He says, I'll explain how we do it. We have an altar call. I said, uh-uh. I said, I want to go right now. I said, I want to say that sinner's prayer, because if I die right now, I'm going to blast hell wide open. So he looks at me, and he said, right there on the stairs outside of the church, we knelt down, and I accepted the Lord as my first Amen. So I said, well, uh, I went to the few services, and then I started to go a little bit more and a little bit more. And I said to the, to the pastor, what can I do? I mean, I, I kind of, I'd like to do something. He said, well, this is kind of ironic. Just remember what I'm saying now. He said to me, uh, how about if you cut the grass for us? I said, yeah, fine, I'll do that. So I cut the grass, and to make it a long story really short, I went from cutting the grass to driving the bus to pick up kids. I went from teaching a Sunday school class. Uh, I even, he even, in fact, Russell Dennis has a call. Well, he's the home of the Lord now. But, uh, in fact, his son, I, I called not too long ago, and I said, uh, you know me? He says, no. He's got a college in Indiana. And uh, I said, they should pick him up on the bus. I know he he says, really? I said, yeah. So anyway, he had me do a lot of different things there, and I enjoyed all of it. I sang in the choir, and I did a lot of stuff. So I was there for about uh, roughly 20 years. I left on maybe 15. And then I left, and I came home, because I'm from Providence. And I couldn't stay there. I wanted to get back with my Portuguese, my family, and all my relatives. And I stayed there for a while, but there's a Catholic church and there's a Protestant church, and that's it. So at that time, there was only 3,000 people in Providence now, too. And uh, so at that time, I said, well, I'm going to go somewhere else. So I started driving a trailer, and I ended up here meeting my wife. And uh, we, uh, we talked, and we got together. And I said, uh, I started talking to her about salvation and different things. And so one day she was going by the First Baptist Church of Webster. And that was the other pastor that I, he was like a brother to me. And that was Pastor <laughs> Tom Hahn. And, uh, we were in there, and I started talking to him, and I got to know him. He was from Maine, and we got to, we got to be really good friends. I was in that church for 30 years. Pastor Hahn is home with the Lord now, also. And I did. I stayed with him for quite a long time, and I was I was there all the time. I was the same. I did all kinds of stuff there. I. I was a trustee, I was a treasurer, I, you, you name it, I did it. And the important thing was is he wanted me to cut the grass. I said, okay, <laughs> that's the second church. So I did it, you know, and, and we were together for a long time. And it's hard for me to talk about Pastor Hammond because I was the last person that he saw before he died. Mm -hmm. I was there 
in his room, in, in, the, in the living room with him. He grabbed my hand and he took his last breath. And that man was incredible. So I decided the new pastor came and I just couldn't get up to, I just couldn't deal with him. So I said, I'm going to go look for another church. So, believe it or not, I went to five different churches, Connecticut, I went all over the place. I came back here, because originally I used to live in Sutton off of Fuller Road. So I drove back here, and I went to Home Depot, and I came back, and something said to me, pull in there. I said, there's only one car in the parking lot, I'll, I'll pull in. So I pulled in, I knocked on the door, and the guy came out, started talking to me, and First thing I said to him was, are you the pastor? And he said, no. I said, oh, good. I'm going to the pastor. Pastor Don came out and started talking to me, and I asked him, do you believe once under grace, always under grace? And I asked a few questions. And he says, yeah. And so it ended up that the Lord led me here. And I've been here ever since. And just because I'm 72, I guess they may be an elder, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> and, you know, the funny part of all of this is, I'm cutting the grass here, too. <laughs> so, I think my whole thing is, I cut grass. So, <laughs> but, uh, so that's, uh, that's just my testimony. The Lord has used me. I took a Marine that was <laughs> far from anything, and he's been using me for... Good 50 years, and uh, I'm doing this because Pastor and I talked, and I said I'd like to talk to the to the preachers because some of them don't realize how special they really are, and I know what you guys put up with because I've been on the inside with, with two fantastic pastors, and I know what you take, and I know how the people treat you know some of you, and I just want to tell you, you know. God has got a special place for you guys because you've got the best and most powerful job in the world. And I would give it anything to have the call that you guys have. But I just want to say that. God bless each and every one of you. And any time you decide to get depressed and get down, just remember there's one former Marine that really appreciates who you guys are and your wives. Aww.